Hello everyone, my name is Actinium12, I am a variety streamer and a YouTube uh, content creator and today I'm going to be teaching you about the wonderful AVA aka Alliance vs Alliance fights within Adophus. This guide will be covering everything from roles all the way up to who and what can uh, be done within a zone and what it will actually give you. Now, before we start, make sure that you, you know, go and follow us if you like the content or not. Uh, if you don't, well, then just don't, you know, doesn't matter. Anyways, uh, yeah, so what are zones? Uh, most likely these little things here. Now, as you can see, I opened up the map and then I'm basically going to show you all the zones that there are. Zones are basically dividing the world in certain aspects of many groups and those can be controlled by an alliance. An alliance is nothing more than a collective of guilds that bind together. Now, there are many things that alliances can do. First of all, they can control zones, which will yield nuggets for them. And that means more commas for them or certain crafts that they can do. Second of all, they can actually defend each other's perceptors. Perceptors being actually beings that literally will collect taxes off of other drops in the maps that they're on and certain uh, maps surrounding it. I don't know what the yield is for every perceptor. I'll have to look that up into the perceptors guide. Anyway, so they can actually defend for other guilds, meaning you are more secure if you actually have a guild and you have perceptors down on certain places, you'll be more secure if your alliance can actually help you fight those that attack your perceptors. Another thing that alliances also offer is the fact that you will be able to play with other people, which is, you know, you know it's, it's, it's basically a gigantic collective of people, so you'll be able to play with more people. It's always nice to have an alliance. Now, as you can see, we are in the Elias Temple. To get there, all you need to do is take the boat right here, which is at 1629. And then you appear into the downward stairs of the temple. And all you have to do is go up and then you can talk to Hal here to actually get one of the three Alliance roles. Once you do, as a member of an Alliance, talk to him and then get the roles, you'll be able to choose Undertaker the sentinel role or the healer role now the undertaker role specifically is nothing more than a role that will literally permit you to basically ban people from the map Headshot. once they died versus your actual companions for example if you have a map fight and then your team aggro's another team if you are an undertaker and you end up winning all you can do is basically make sure that once they're dead they don't come back to the cough meaning they are completely eliminated from the game that is a neat little trick that you can do and you sure you sure need those little undertakers on the map sentinels on the other hand are the other role that you can actually have now sentinels are a bit special they're nothing more than a very very weird auto aggro thing <laughs> on the map basically anyone that steps within a certain range of you will instantly get aggroed and that's about it that's what a sentinel does you're basically an aggro machine you will take aggro on anyone healers on the other hand those are those are particularly well liked and not a lot of you know alliances have a lot of those because well they're basically the ones that can bring back people to life heroes never die if you happen to be a healer and you have a team that's down, you can literally run there before the undertaker of the other team basically whips them from the map. You can actually revive them thanks to the little potions that I have here. I myself am a healer and you can bring them back to the fight, meaning they can continue fighting. Once you get eliminated from cough, by the way, by an undertaker, if you come back, you do not count. It doesn't matter if you have AVA on. You will just not count. So yeah, there you have it. Now, once a prism has been made vulnerable, yes, you have 24 hours. After the 24 hours will end, that's when the actual fight will start. Then King of the Hill is on. Then you'll be able to get on the map. You'll see this little interface right here. 
as you can see there's one person from another alliance on the map as well as us we will be given one little potion here by one of our alliance members who really loves to camouflage themselves now this is also a tactic you can camouflage yourself thanks to the actual potions that transform you into whatever a thing you can camouflage yourself as a actual trash can a rock or a actual um, bush and if you do and if you stay on the map you won't be seen or at least harder to see people tend to not particularly watch for you know plants and other things they tend to actually seek things that actually stand out on the map which is something that you don't want to do because then they'll simply go and aggro you off anyways as you can see our tactic here is basically to be outnumbering everyone king of the hill is nothing more than an outnumbering game you don't particularly have to pvp you can it will just speed up the process but king of the hill is basically a 30 minute game where the more people are on the map aka the more people are on the actual zone from your alliance the more points you get every minute you'll get one point which is equals to the amount of people that are there times your actual level for example if you have three people that are level 200 in there from your actual guild or alliance you'll have 600 points as long as they're not aggroed off once you're aggroed off unfortunately you do not count no more and you're eliminated as well as staying there for a complete amount of 30 minutes it will give you the majority aka once you've actually been able to stay there for 30 minutes without getting anyone to aggro you you'll basically win the actual alliance with the most people on the actual zone it doesn't matter how many maps you control will get numerical advantage meaning they actually win the cough if they do then it all goes up to you you have one hour to place a prism down to basically you know get the rewards and then control the zone one thing to note those that can place a prism are only those that actually have the right within the guilds to give that right your guild leader himself or herself or this apache self needs to actually go and give you that right right so unless you have the right to place one or modify one you unfortunately cannot place one in my guild i myself can do it and izzy who's actually my second in command who was asking me to explain the um the leaf potions that we actually got who actually transform you you can make those by the way for that all you need to do is be i think an alignment either bonta or brack from a specific order and then you can actually make those more about that in the alignment you know tutorial for now as you can see we have numerical advantage and one of our actual members whipped the last person out of the uh, the zone so that means we'll be able to actually dominate now what are the prices for this it's very simple nuggets all you need is nuggets and all you want is nuggets every time that you weaken a zone and you're able to take it over once you take over the zone and you put down your prism the amount of nuggets that were actually farmed by the last prism will be literally thrown onto all the mobs surrounding it and will be divided equally let's say it that let's say there's 10 maps and there's a total of three you know three groups of mobs per map that's a total of 300 groups i cannot believe that i just said that three times 10 equals 300 that is 30 30 it's 30 oh my god it's 30 holy crap it's 30 how oh my god man brainless as can be and there's 3000 nuggets on the prism if the prism got 3000 and 30 groups that means each group of each map meaning each group of the three on each map will receive about 100 nuggets each and that will be equally divided throughout the whole zone so all you have to do then is fight them for the actual reward once you win you'll drop the nuggets and then all you have to do is ba bim ba bam craft 
or you can also spin them with this particular person right here that I'll show you on screen right now. And once you've done that, you can actually choose between these prices right here and I'll show you right now. Once you've actually picked something and you spent all your nuggets, uh, do do make sure that you don't just overspend them. You can actually craft things with them as well, like potions and other things. You might need them for something else. But yeah, that's pretty much, you know, Alliance versus Alliance and King of the Hill battles. It's nothing more than a numerical advantage. And you're not particularly, you know, obliged to go for a fight. All you need to do is basically wait it out and chill while camouflaged if you really don't want to fight. Or you can just go and fight yourself. I'm not saying that you shouldn't PvP everyone off the map. You definitely can. That gives you numerical advantage way faster. Do note though, <laughs> once you are in a fight, you are not being counted. Which means that if you do get aggroed off the map, your actual points will not be added. Meaning, depending on how you like, there are strategies out there that you can do to actually get people off the map faster. For example, getting a whole bunch of, you know, very tanky pandas or very, very annoying sedatives with a lot of MP rip and a whole bunch of tank to just aggro people in sentinel mode continuously and just get them all off the map as fast as possible and basically well i say get off the map but technically just make people fight them so that they are not accounted for and then you get the numerical advantage by making the fight last about 30 minutes and that is how you win there are other tactics to cough and you can definitely try them out like the bush tactic or the burning bush as i like to call it you basically make yourself into a bush and if someone gets near you either aggro them or you just stay there and then you revive someone you can definitely do that anyways thank you all for watching now leave you with my outro self and yeah i hope this was actually helpful for you guys thank you all bye bye thank you all once again for watching uh, i really appreciate you guys if you would like to help out the channel, there's a link in the description below. All you have to do is follow it and you will get what I mean. Anyways, if you like what you saw, please leave a like, comment, and uh, subscribe. And hit that notification bell to stay up to tune. See you all. Bye-bye.